What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create a stylized folder dropdown in Squarespace 7.1. So I'm here in my Squarespace 7.1 site. Uh, you can see as I scroll down here, I have this awesome boxed content effect. I have some split layouts. Both of those are taught in my course, Custom Layouts with Squarespace. Uh, they are responsive. So as I drag down the screen size, they automatically, very pleasingly, uh, drop down and resize, as well as the split layouts. Um, and they look great on mobile as well. So if you want to learn how to do this kind of cool uh, customization in Squarespace and get some nice layouts, perfect for box content is perfect for pricing tables, uh, displaying services, anything like that. You can see the buttons are always at the bottom no matter how much content you have in it. Just a really nice way of displaying uh, services or pricing and things like that. And then obviously the split layout super cool design um, and that functionality is something that I teach in the course as well so go ahead and check out my custom layouts in Squarespace course you can create really awesome websites for your clients or for yourself it's only 129 bucks um, so definitely go check that out all right enough self-promotion let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial so I have a folder here that I've added to my navigation and I've added some items to the folder. So when you do that, uh, this is how the navigation appears, uh, just in a little drop down folder like this. So we are going to be customizing that drop down there. Uh, let's go ahead and right click on the, that menu item pull up our custom, uh, our Chrome, excuse me, dev tools, the inspector. Uh, and now we can look at the HTML that makes up the drop downs. So if we go ahead and uh, select this header nav item, and if we go, come over here to where it says colon hov, and we activate the hover style, uh, that'll make the element display as if it's always being hovered over. So we can see that this header nav folder content, so this is the actual uh, container itself that then houses the each item in the folder. So we're going to first select that class and you target classes with a period and open up some curly brackets. So what we need to do is make these items full width because we as we hover over them, we don't want any space on either side or on the top or the bottom. We want these items to be full width in their folder. So we can see right now it has a padding of 0.5M on the top and the bottom and 1M on the right and the left. So what we're gonna do is um, we are going to target that and we're going to change the padding to zero. Now you'll notice nothing happened. So why did nothing happen? Well, the reason for that is um, we are targeting this header nav folder with only one class. And currently the padding is being added with three classes. So header nav, header nav item folder, and header nav folder content. So their styling is much, much more specific than the styling that we're trying to add. So uh, we just need to at least match that specificity. And you can see our style here is being crossed out because it's less specific. So what we can do is just copy the classes that they are using. And if I paste that in, now you can see uh, that our styling is being applied. So specificity uh, is very important. Okay, so now our items are stretching the full width of the container but we do want spacing on either side. So now we'll add that padding back in to each header nav folder item. So I'll go ahead and copy that class and within the curly brackets, uh, we're gonna target the header nav folder item and we are going to add padding of 0.5M and 1M. 
So we're just going to match the padding that it had before. So now it looks exactly the same. The only difference is that if we add a background color to each of these items, it'll span the full width of the container now. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. When a header nav folder item is hovered, so um, let's go ahead and declare our hover state down below. So when a header nav folder item is hovered, we want the background of that item to be, we'll just say yellow for now. So now you can see as I hover over an item, the whole item row is selected edge to edge. So that looks really nice, much nicer than before. Um, and one other thing that we can do is we can change the color as well. So we can change the color to white, for example. Like let's say this was black. We could then, as it's hovered over, we could change the color to white. Um, so that styling is the color styling is not applying because we're trying to add the the color to the header nav folder item container and not the link itself. So the color is set on the link itself. So what we could do then is just uh, within these curly brackets, uh, we can target the link itself. So I'll open up some curly brackets and now if I add this color to the link, when I hover over it, it'll actually turn white. So pretty cool there. Um, Let's see, one thing that we can do to make this easier to update in the future, uh, we can set up some variables. So I always like to set up variables for clients so they don't ever have to go sifting through the CSS. I always just keep them at the top. So let's go ahead and add some variables. So the first variable will be the link BG color. And right now we have that set to black. And so I'll copy this at link BG color and I'll paste it for the background color. And now when we update this variable, it'll update this background color here. And the next thing we can uh, set up a variable for is the link color itself. We'll do link text color. That's a little more descriptive. So right now we have that set to white. So now we can replace the color here in the CSS with the variable. So now the client could just come up here to these variables and easily update these. It makes a lot of sense and they don't have to go searching through the code through the CSS down here. So that is very, very handy. Um, so the other thing that we'll wanna do, I always like to comment, make sure my CSS is commented. Um, so I, you have to put the forward slash forward slash, otherwise it'll mess up your CSS. But if you write forward slash forward slash, then that is how you write a comment. And then I just like to do a bunch of dashes and this will be, um, this will be drop down menu styling. Perfect, and then we'll do some more dashes. So that just like kind of sections off uh, what this CSS is about. And then we can even below it, we can say end drop down menu styling. Okay, perfect. So now we have a nice clearly defined section here of what all this CSS is about. Now the next thing I can do just to sa save some room, excuse me, um, is to, whenever I only have like one uh, line of CSS, I'll just make it all on one line. It takes up less space that way, especially when you're nesting like this, you can have like a bunch of trailing um, closing brackets. Uh, so I'll just drag that up to that line. Um, and now this looks a little more condensed. So uh, we'll go ahead and save that. And now the client could come up here and they could change this to yellow and they could change the text color to black very easily and we get a nice hover effect on the menu. All right, so that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed that quick little drop down nav CSS video. Hope you learned some things. And again, if you wanna check out my custom layouts course, 
highly recommend it. Uh, it's got some really cool stuff in there. The link in the description is below. All right, that's it for me. Have a good one. I will see you in the next one.